The dent was from Art's ex-wife. So in Cannonball, expecting the unexpected is always a good philosophy. And that has to do with the running of it and everything else. But sometimes the unexpected happens outside the Cannonball. And that happened to me. I got a phone call from Ed Bolian, which is usually a, a good thing. Usually good things come from phone calls from him. As he's seen in the video, he owned one of the Audi Cannonball cars, the Brock Yates cars. And he chased that down and got the number one car and had a modicum of success with it in its, uh, its running. Mostly troubles with it, I believe. But there were 12 of them made. Nobody knows where any of them are except for that number one car. So the phone call comes and Ed goes, I just got a phone call. It's from the owner of number 11. Really? Like, and I had always said, I totally would want one of these in the belief that no one's ever going to find one. You know, they're stuck in a junkyard. They have one sticker on them identifying what it is. And it's probably been stripped away years ago. And he's all, the owner of number 11 called and is looking to sell it. And I obviously already have one. Would you be interested in that? I'm like, yes, yes, I would. I mean, I didn't care if it was a pile of junk. That's kind of one of the holy grails of Cannonball is this mysterious Audi Quattro from 1985. So he gives me the woman's number, Amy, and I give her a call. And they live up in Washington. I'm like, hi, I'm John Fricara. Ed Bolian told me about your Audi. And she goes, I know who you are. I'm like, really? Because she had gone online and apparently watched like, and did all the Google research on me that I found out I was a cannonballer. That was her stipulation. She wanted to sell the car to a cannonballer. And I apparently had passed the test. And she was as sweet as you could get about it. It was her husband's car who had just passed away. And he bought it new from Brumos in Georgia in 85 and owned it in his entire life. And it was his pride and joy. Apparently, whatever other car came into their lives, the Audi had the garage. It was always inside and taken care of. She's like, are you interested in it? I'm like, yeah, I, I absolutely. So we came to a, a fair number. I, as I do quite often at my house, I go, honey? <laughs> and my wife, Laura, knows instantly what that means. She's like, what are you buying? Ed Bolian found one of the other Audi Cannonball cars. She's like, you're buying it, aren't you? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> we worked out a number. I bought the car. My friend Tyler at uh, Rule Garage up in Washington went and looked at it for me and got it. And I thought, great, I'm, it's a Cannonball car. I'm going to fly up there. I'm going to Cannonball it back to my house in California. Be an appropriate thing to do. And he's like, yeah, maybe, maybe not. You know, it's been sitting for a while. He put a battery in it. The tires were a little old. And he's like, you know, this comes with a lot of things. I'm like, what do you mean? And Amy had mentioned that he, he had bought some spares for it. He's like, there's a whole other set of wheels. He's like, there's an entire bottom to a 4,000 Quattro. I'm like, a bottom? He's like, yeah, the floor pan. It has a, it has a dent in the bottom of it from apparently some impact. It turns out... Art, who owned the car, was insanely meticulous. He was an architect. In his mind, you just replace the floor, like to make it perfect again. He had bought an extra grill. The grill was fine, bought an extra grill. He had boxes of stuff. He's like, you probably want to ship this. I'm like, okay. And he goes, and it doesn't go in reverse. I'm like, well, that's concerning because if reverse is going, there's a chance the other gears are going to follow along. And it is like a, 800,000 mile drive down to my house. And I'm like, I think I'm going to just err on the side of reason. So I ship it down and it arrives and it is so cool. i had only briefly saw Ed's when it was sitting at his house. I never ridden in it. I never really took a close enough interest to know exactly what it was. And it's a 1985 Audi 4000 S Quattro. And the story goes 
that back in the day, in 1985, Brumos, which is a dealership down in Jacksonville, Florida, who's very famous, and if you ever look them up, for racing Porsches, Bob Snodgrass, who was the legendary general manager of the place, decided they were going to do the one lap of America in 1985. Of course, the cannonball was over at that point. So they built a special Audi 4000 S Quattro to do it. And at this point, the one lap wasn't uh, what it is today. And what it is today is they take cars and you start a tire rack and you go every day to a different track and you do two sessions in each track and you accumulate the time at each track and then you drive overnight to the next track. And it's an extraordinary event and it's fantastic. But back then the one lap, which was Brock Yates production, because he shut the cannonball down because he thought somebody was gonna die, which probably would have happened. It was a, literally a lap of the United States. You would start in one corner of the US and drive to the other corner, down the other corner, and then over the corner and back up. And you had to match the time that Brock Yates had set, which was a mystery time. Whoever got closest won, is my understanding how it worked. The Audi was pole position for 1985, and Snodgrass and two other guys drove the car. And when they got back, Snodgrass, not brilliant marketer, not missing an opportunity, was like, well, what we need to do is build some replicas of my fantastic Audi. And so they did, they built 12. And Brock Yates signed off on it. And the idea was that he would sign the cars and they would they'd be, all be numbered. And they were not like, they weren't souped up versions of it. They were pretty stock. Now the Quattro back then was in 85, an extraordinary car. Like you gotta remember almost everything, a Kia is four wheel drive today. Like everything is four wheel drive. But back then Audi had the corner on the market of the four wheel drive cars, them and, and Subaru. They were, of course were, you know, the Group B badass rally cars too. But the engines put out 126 horsepower. But you could just sit there with the car floor the whole time and never worry about it because the Quattro took care of everything. It was a cool car. It was a great idea for it to go across the United States in any kind of weather condition. They didn't know what they were gonna drive through. From my understanding, it's six he made for Jacksonville store because they just, this was kind of a way of promoting their new Audi stores. One in Jacksonville and one in Atlanta. And the one Ed bought was one of the Jacksonville cars. It was number one. And mine was number 11, which came out of Atlanta. It was a relatively stock car. It was more of a, a image package. They put in Recaro seats. They special ordered them from the factory with a gray leather interior. And then they got a matching front Recaro seats made in matching leather. So the entire interior was this kind of cool gray. And the seats had little pa cannonball patches on them. They had a badge on the center with the number of the car saying one lap cannonball on it. They had a Nardi steering wheel in matching gray leather. They had gaudy wheels on them. Now Ed's car didn't have them on there, but my car did. That was the spare set of wheels. He took the gaudy wheels off because they were too special and it was running on stock wheels. So when I opened up the boxes and there are a restored set of like these impossible to get gaudy wheels. I found later in his boxes of things, he had center badges made up in case they ever got scratched. So I have probably the largest collection of gaudy center badges ever created. There's Brock Yates' signature on the back. They moved some badging around. They had some fog lights on the front. It was just an appearance package. It was kind of a celebration of the one lap in Cannonball. So I get the car and one of the stipulations of my purchase of the car, because I felt like I was in line with other people, like she could have moved down the line. I wanted to straight up raise the ante and I said, if you sell me this car, I will cannonball it in his, in his honor. And she's like, all right, okay. Like that hopefully was what pushed it over the edge. Because apparently he was a huge cannonball fan, never got to actually cannonball the car because there were no cannonball events. They obviously all over until the, the 29 4 came back. I made that promise and I'm like, we got to get the car ready in case this ever happens. Now, I wasn't gonna do another 2904. I was over in 2017. And the C2C Express ended in 2019. I'm like, well, maybe I'll just fly it out there and we'll just do a solo run, which is, I, I'm not about single car runs. I don't like it. I see no point in driving in one car across the United States by yourself. Not that people haven't done it, Ed and Doug and all you guys, but to each his own. I needed to cannonball the Cannonball Audi at some point. And I, we got it ready, brought it to my shop. Uh, mechanic Matt laid into it. We did a service to it. And the car is actually in great condition. He really took care of it. There were two dents on it, one on the roof right next to the sunroof and one on the door. And if I remember this correctly, Amy told me 
The dent was from Art's ex-wife. Like she, she knew that he loved the car. So the dent on the roof is her fist. <laughs> like a goodbye, boom. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm hesitant to take the dent out because it's part of the story, right? So it's got two little dents, but otherwise in great shape. And having been from the Northwest, it was no rust and it was pretty clean, which I was happy with. But he did have a box of records in it. I love digging through records. I, I really, when cars come with records, I'm the guy who puts them in date order and reads them all because I want to see the, you know, the, the, the history of the car. So I went through all of them and there were two binders, which I thought were just fascinating. So he bought the car in 85. In 86, <laughs> the wheels get stolen. Every letter he wrote, because this is back in the day before email, you had to write letters. Every letter he wrote is in there showing the, the course of how he, he wrote Brumos and he's like, my wheels were stolen. He's got a picture of the car sitting up on blocks, document it. And he writes Brumos, he goes, the wheels got stolen. I need the wheels. And Brumos is like, good luck. Cause Gotti apparently moves on. You know, they do one car wheel style and they moved on. And they had to dig up a set of these Gotti wheels and charged him 2,800 bucks in 1986, which in today's money has got to be a million dollars, right? A couple of years later, like 1990, and I don't know where he's parking this car or how rough Seattle is or whatever, the front seats get stolen. Now, again, these are specially made Recaro seats. He's writing Recaro, he's writing Brumos, he's writing the president of Italy, like whoever will listen to him, he's writing them because he's gonna find these original Recaro seats. And even Brumos is like, we had those specially made, good luck. And he was persistent. And you could just read him, he, so passionate about this car. He finds the seats in the original gray. So my seats are missing the Cannonball logo on them, which I'll have remade eventually. But they are the correct model, Recaro seats in the correct color back in the car. I mean, he even went as far as the wheels, the Gaudi wheels get dented like a year later. And I mean, there's a bind, like it's this thick, an inch, each one of these things happen. It's like an inch thick of, of correspondence. This one's got bags of photographs of the road that he drove on and the expansion joint or wherever they were doing construction that the car went over and dented his, his impossible to get gaudy wheels. So he went after the city and there's letters to the city and letters back from the city and he's just hammering them. And we all know if you try to fight city hall, you're gonna lose, not art. This guy stuck with it and they paid him out to get the wheels fixed. So when I put on a fresh set of tires, you could see the repair inside one of the wheels where it was dented. This was his love of his life. And I'm like, I respect that. I so respect that. It's time now, you know, to cannonball the car. So I, I take it out, I wanna test it out. And I owned an Audi 4000S, a front wheel drive car years ago, which is my commuter car and I knew how awfully slow they are. The Quattro has the five cylinder engine, the front wheel drive cars are the four. So I had a little bit more power, but you're losing that in the Quattro. So you're not really gaining a whole lot much. And I took it on the Andiamo rally up in the Sierra Nevadas. It's a thousand mile rally. This car hasn't turned a wheel in years. And it was fantastic. I mean, there is nothing like driving a slow car fast. I'm out there with like 612 Ferraris and guys with all this heavy McLarens and all this cool machinery and I'm into my 85 Quattro. And believe me, when we parked with all this beautiful hardware, you know, there's Alfa Romeos and there's a Cobra and all this, people are looking at the Audi. They're coming over and be like, oh, this is so cool. We did this full rally. We drove around a thousand miles. We did laps at uh, Thunder Hill. I respect Audi Quattro so much more now because you can leave the pedal floored in a corner and just turn the wheel. And the, whatever the magic, the Germans stuffed into that system will just keep the car. There's no active computers working on. This is all mechanical. It just sends you through the corner. The car leans over a little bit because it's the 80s, right? It's not super stiff. Car rolls over. Once it rolls over, you can go through anything. I fell in love with the Audi Quattro. And my wife knew, like I came back and she's like, you're, you're falling in love with the car. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I am. Now, can it get across the country? 
Now, one of the drawbacks of a lot of German cars in the 70s and 80s, especially when they came to the United States, they'd gear them differently. They don't have like these Autobahn gears in them. They were slow, they weren't terribly fast cars, so they put lower gear sets in it. It had a close, the car I have is a close ratio transmission and the fifth gear isn't all that tall. At 80 miles an hour, I think it was 4,000 RPM. In a car that old, you don't wanna be cranking out that kind of RPM. You know, granted the, the red line's well over six, but it's still a geezer of an engine. So I'm like, all right, well, I think the only improvement I wanna make, I didn't wanna add a tank. I didn't wanna change the car because it was so beautiful in stock. I thought, you know, the only thing it really needs is a higher fifth gear. So I did a bunch of, in my internet research, I found out that there were a few transmissions. This is the 016, basically Volkswagen transmission that came in the Audis, came in Volkswagens, came in a bunch of things. And it also was in the 944 Porsches. So I figured I'd buy a transmission with a higher gear, a fifth gear, and I can drop the RPMs. Doesn't really have the power to push the RPMs, but it'll help it a little bit. So we found a 944 transmission, bought that, brought it in, took it apart, mechanic Matt's under the car doing his doing his thing, and it's not the same. That was 400 bucks. And I gotta go find another one. I found out that the Audi 5000 Quattro Turbo had like the ideal gear. I'm like, where am I gonna find one of these? I want to ship a transmission from across the country just to get this one cog and a synchro, essentially. And then I go online, and you're always despondent when you look for parts that are that rare, because how could they possibly be in your backyard? Boom, in my backyard, only a couple hours away. I call up the place, and I'm like, do you have this transmission? I'm like, yes. Like, Is it this transmission? Because these shops, if they stack transmissions on top of each other. They have the transmission. We go and grab it. It fits. Put it in. Now fifth gear is a whole thousand RPMs lower. Now it can make it. This is, this car is ready to drive across the United States. It is shook down, it is gonna do it. We took it to Radwood as the last kind of drive test when they started those again in the Bay Area. And uh, I'm like, yeah, time, time to do it. I made a promise to cannonball it. I don't like going in single car cannonballs. So the only solution, really, the, my only avenue was to throw another cannonball. Now it wasn't a 2904 because I said I was shutting that down. So we had to invent something new. And my good friend and compatriot and cannonballer, Pierce Plam was the one who set it in motion. And he calls one day and goes, what if we do another cannonball event? I'm like, and I'm my first reaction is like, no, 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 bad idea. He's like, no, listen to me. He goes, you know, Last year, this is in 2020, everybody was going bonkers with the records, the COVID records, and all these high-powered cars. And he's like, you know, we can do something different. Because I'm always, I'm not about the overall record and the speed. It's got to be something interesting. Like the 2904 was about doing it on a budget of $2,904. What's the gambit? And he's like, we do it with slower cars to show you that you can go almost as fast as all these guys in these 700 horsepower Audis and BMWs and Mercedes. I'm like, okay, all right, this is working. He's all, instead of the cannonball, you call it the musket ball because it's smaller, slower, and a lot less accurate. And I'm like, okay. So he slowly talks me into it and I, I chomp down on the bit. I'm like, all right. So we came up with the musket ball, which is, a race for cars with less than 100 horsepower at the wheels, which the Audi fits in perfectly because it's only, depending on what you read, 126 horsepower or 115 horsepower when it was new. And then you take with the Quattro in it and you rip off 25% of that. No way that car makes 100 horsepower at the wheels. The Audi fits the parameters. Let's do it. That's how we begin the planning for the musket ball which is a whole other story. Who wants a free carbon fiber ring? Well, right now, Patrick Adair Designs is giving away a free carbon fiber ring with any purchase if you use the code VINWIKICF at checkout on their website. You can find them at the link in the description below. You can also follow along on Patrick Adair's YouTube channel. You've seen him here telling car stories, but over there, he documents his journey in entrepreneurism and some of the amazing things they do to create rings out of the most interesting materials from Earth and from space. So check them out now and thank them for their support of VINWIKI.